So welcome now. My name is Paulus. I'm BIM application engineer here at AGA CAD. Uh, here we specialize uh, in creating applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of the world's leading uh, leading BIM practitioners. Uh, our aim is to AGA CAD has developed the widest range of true BIM software. It covers wood and metal framing, precast concrete design, and MEP systems design. And today we're going to talk about our BIM solution called Wood Framing Roof and Metal Framing Roof. Um, they are intended for detailed design of prefabricated timber and steel roof panels, truss and rafter systems. Recognized as an AAC uh, industry partner solution by Autodesk. All right, uh, and in this webinar, we'll creation of trusses and truss systems for roofs and floors, uh, production of uh, views, drawings, schedules, and drawing sheets with a single click. Uh, we're going to look at bespoke truss family creation with custom parameters, uh, creation of unique trusses with inbuilt truss builder, uh, among many other things. Uh, and what we'll end up with are trusses generated uh, for both many other things. Uh, and what we'll end up with are trusses generated uh, for both a uh, Revit roof of the simple geometry uh, and also for a roof with a bit more complex geometry. And to finish off the tutorial, we'll sort all trusses and structural members and produce, and produce shop drawings. Okay, so let's now move on to our Revit model. Okay, so if we open our Revit session, so if you have uh, just installed Tools for BIM uh, Doc and want to start using Trust Plus, you just follow the sequence. Uh, Tools for BIM Doc is going to appear at the top of your uh, Revit uh, ribbon. If you click Tools for BIM and then Show Doc, the Doc is going to appear on the right hand side. If you just uh, expand the Doc slightly and then go to either wood framing or metal framing and then look for uh, Trust Plus. And this icon is uh, gonna uh, let the uh, tab appear at the top of the ribbon. So if you just click that and then pull out your Trust Plus uh, panel, close Tools for BIM Dock. Okay, so let's uh, now look at what can be achieved uh, with a simple Revit roof and a less complex geometry uh, with a simple Revit roof and a less complex geometry. So in this uh, view, uh, you can see uh, a roof uh, trusses uh, generated with Truss Plus. So in this case, we have a gable and truss systems on both sides of the roof. And right here, we have a uh, step down hip truss system with some valley trusses right over here. Uh, we have used 3D grids and then uh, used those grids to generate trusses. Um, because, well, generating trusses from 3D grids is sort of most effective and most commonly used workflow. Okay, so exactly the same goes for uh, metal trusses. So in this project, uh, sorry, in this one, uh, we have uh, exactly the same house. Um, just in this case, uh, trusses are metal. Okay. So same deal, yeah, uh, just different material. You can work both in wood or steel. Okay, so let's get back to the project. So once uh, choices are, are generated, you can switch to analytical view. Uh, you can select trusses or structural members to gather information or perform any structural uh, tasks right here in this view. Each truss is represented by uh, a number of uh, analytical lines. Okay, so let's now see a bit more complex roof shape and how we can generate trusses uh, using Truss Plus. Right, so uh, in this case, I have already generated uh, most of the trusses uh, and I'll, I'll show you how to generate grids uh, and then trusses upon those grids. Okay, so let's begin with this uh, end of the roof. If we uh, select our Revit roof line, so we're going to use just one roof line. Um, if we select that and then um, Trust Plus is sort of recognizing the model lines that the roof is based on and it's allowing you to select uh, one or multiple uh, model lines to work out the geometry of the roof. So in this case, uh, we're generating a grid for cable and truss system. So we, we just concerned of this uh, for this one 
model line. So we select that. And then in the window, we will go for a gable end uh, self type of trusses. We select OK. So Trust Plus is going to automatically recognize the uh, shape of the roof and set that uh, specific uh, grid. Okay, so that's in place. And then uh, we're going to try to go over here and do exactly the same. Um, so if we sele select that one line to generate this sort of step down type of uh, trust system, select OK. Okay, so grids uh, can be modified quicker, unlike already generated trusses. Um, it's why we are generating grids first, and if there are any modifications to the system, uh, we can modify the grid way faster than the truss that is already in place and generated. Okay, so we see uh, the system has been inserted. Okay, so in this case, we're going to need uh, another uh, truss system right here. So we're going to use... Uh, um, trust system tab insert trust systems by multiple roof lines select that uh, and then in this case uh, uh, trust plus is asking us to select uh, a roof we're going to work uh, trust plus is asking us to select uh, a roof we're going to work with and then already you have uh, you can see the model lines have appeared of that roof so it's just a footprint of the roof um, and now if we just follow instructions top down by selecting uh, those lines okay so select uh, one line here the opposite this one here and right at the other end and we click ok okay type zero here click ok okay so there we have it uh, it's only one, but that's all we need to sort of array those trusses to the other end. So uh, what to do for um, valley trusses, if we select that one truss uh, grid uh, and then go to uh, left side of your screen, properties tab. And then if we untick and then if we untick set main roof, this will just allow uh, us to generate valley trusses. Uh, so untick uh, set main roof parameter and we go to truss systems, uh, insert valley set grid. Okay, and it's going to automatically generate valley trusses. Okay, so that's in place. Uh, let's see the L shape of our roof. Uh, right. So again, uh, go to truss systems. Uh, we're going to insert the grid by multiple lines. Uh, now pick our rivet roof. Uh, and let's follow just uh, the instructions by selecting model lines to help define the roof shape. Okay. Okay, that should work. Click OK. So it's automatically going to generate uh, grids again, um, real time. So you can you can follow the process. Okay, so talking about Trust Plus interface, it's sort of self plus interface. It's sort of self-explanatory. We have four tabs, uh, and each uh, sort of has the its own uh, functionality. So configurations tab uh, will let you modify and create various configurations right uh okay so that's uh worked out okay so now how to generate trusses from the grids if we select that uh, tr uh trust grid system and then if we go to trust systems tab uh, click generate trusses and then the window will appear asking you to sort of uh specify what trusses do you want to place at what points of the grids uh, by default this will work fine in this situation uh, if you click OK. Right, so going back to the interface, um, the uh, Trust Systems tab uh, is where you insert, modify, and update grids, also generate or delete trusses, as you noticed. Um, trusses tab contains various functions to further detail down uh, your truss. Okay, and then Shop Drawings tab uh, is where you find everything from sorting uh, and preparing shop drawings to creating assemblies and exporting to CNC, which will uh, have a look at later. Okay, the other important thing to know is that uh, Revit roof would need to have 
supports, obviously, such as walls uh, or beams. Um, so you can draw a roof from the footprint once you have established your perimeter walls. Uh, you can use pick walls function uh, in the sort of basic uh, Revit functionality of making roofs, and that will generate your roof type. You can specify your slope, of course, um, or any sort of features of the roof that are um, unusual or just the way the project uh, is. Okay, so just the way the project uh, is. Okay, so you first need to establish a roof and then upon that roof uh, you're gonna generate grids and then trusses. Okay, so this has uh, generated. Right, so the other thing we forgot is to insert valley set grid right over this side here. So if we select the existing grid of uh, the gable and uh, truss system, um, make sure that it's unticked and then we go to truss systems, uh, insert valley set grid. So exactly like we did before, valley set grid is generated and we just select that uh, grid, go to truss systems, we're going to generate trusses for the valleys. Okay, the other thing with the with the roof, uh, make sure you have a b um, base offset from level. Um, it is a Revit parameter that sort of parameter that sort of offsets the roof from the level it's created on. So in this case, it's on level two, but it has an offset of 400 millimeters. So in between uh, the top of the wall and uh, the bottom of the roof, we have 400 millimeters to allow space for for generating trusses and the other great thing is that you still retain your uh, your actual roof uh, where you can uh, place your uh, other sort of layers just like you would do normally with walls or floors in this case it's a roof so you can see the base offset from level is 400 and it's only 40 mil uh, just just sort of be uh, representative where you can uh, start inserting other layers like cladding or waterproofing. Okay, so this side uh, side starts to look good, right? So the other good thing about Trust Plus, uh, the handy tool is if you select uh, entire, so from from bottom to the top, um, right, just like that. Okay, if we do this, okay. Go to trusses, frame two beams. You can, of course, specify the spacing, uh, etc. Okay, right. So, uh, what to do in this case where we have a gap of missing trusses? So, we select one truss at the one end and the other truss opposite. We select those two trusses. You can see here we have two trusses. Um, and you go to trusses tab. Uh, and if you auto copy two roof floor trusses, um, in this window, you just specify the spacing, whether it's 100, 600, etc. Uh, we're going to use 600 in the middle. Click, click OK. The tool is going to automatically place those uh, missing trusses uh, uh, to infill the empty space between the two trusses that we selected. Okay, that is done. Right, so uh, we can move to the other side of our roof. Um, okay, so let's look at this, right? So we're gonna generate that one, that single truss over here. Generate trusses from truss systems tab. Click okay. We're gonna do exactly the same like we did just now. We, in the space between the two trusses, we're gonna array a bunch of uh, additional trusses at 600. Okay, so if we zoom in, uh, select the truss over here and just select the truss opposite end. Okay, go to uh, tab and again uh, auto copy to roof trusses at 600 millimeters. Okay, so what, what it's doing, it's just taking that uh, truss and making a copy of that exact truss. Um, although in this situation, it's fine the way the end meets uh, other trusses at the corner junction. Um, in this situation, 
here, for example, well, the, the rest of the roof, um, we would need to extend those uh, corner pieces. So I'll show you how um, the newly created trusses can be updated uh, according to the roof geometry. Okay, so that's all going to be done automatically. Okay, the other great feature of Trust feature of Trust Plus is the ability to uh, save and transfer configurations. All AJA CAD add-ons are collaboration enabled. For example, if one project team member is working on a model and has created certain rules for framing, putting dimensions, creating shop drawings, etc., all those configurations are kept in your local drive at all times. So if they want to be, uh, if they have to be shared among the team, you'll just need to share the configurations uh, configuration file and make sure that they, uh, whoever receives the file loads the file into the Trust Plus. So essential configurations are saved as templates for future reuse with just a uh, few clicks. Okay, so that has uh, changed the trusses. Right, so let's go to the side of the Gable End uh, system. If we select the grid and again go to Trust Systems tab, Generate Trusses, click OK from the window. Okay, so I'm sure you're already, I'm sure you're already seeing how the principle repeats itself. Um, as I said, uh, generating trusses from grids, uh, it's sort of a typical, most efficient way of, of working uh, with the Trust Plus. Um, so it's easier to establish a grid first and then generate those trusses. Uh, right, so again, we have gaps uh, if we select two trusses at uh, opposite ends. Um, trust types can be changed. So Trust Plus comes with a huge library of different uh, trust systems and trust types, individual trust types. So all of those trusses can be changed um, according to your standards or company standards, etc. Okay, and let's do exactly the same. Oh, here, yeah. also copy two trusses. Okay, that's done. Uh, what we have left are our valley trusses. We generate those. And, okay, and like I said, um, all those uh, trusses right over here, uh, they should be updated to um, so sort of uh, correspond to the roof shape. Um, this, so uh, like you see here. So um, just uh, for example, we can select two trusses to save time. Uh, principle is exactly the same. So select two trusses. Um, and go to Trust, uh, Trusses tab, Update uh, Roof Floor Truss. So the tool is recognizing that the roof has changed. Uh, it's the, the, the truss is not in the corner uh, junction anymore. Hasn't it doesn't need to be cut like that, and it just sort of extends the ends on both sides, okay? Um, and let's see how we can uh, use this grid system to generate trusses. So exactly the same workflow, generate trusses, and then, okay. Uh, steel, uh, steel trusses, uh, the workflow is exactly the same. Uh, you can generate trusses from grids uh, by uh, one roof line or uh, multiple roof lines. Uh, like I showed you, and then um, the other way to do that, which we're going to cover uh, in a bit, is to uh, generate trusses from model lines. So you literally draw Revit model line between, for example, two walls, and then using that model line, you start generating your trusses. has its own uh, sort of uh, grid as well. All the structural members that make up the entire truss uh, can be tagged, uh, sorted. Uh, so that is important before moving on to shop drawings. Okay, so this bit more complex roof has been framed almost entirely. We're missing a few details, I guess, like I showed you again, you can frame out 
this end over here you can update uh, those trusses like we did with those two here etc okay so uh, let's now look at other great feature of trust plus which allows us to generate trusses from model lines like i just mentioned okay so let's open up this view here right so first what we're going to do is going to uh, set our work plane so if we go to our work plane so if we go to uh, architecture tab set the work plane and then uh, let's say level two is where our top of the wall is we click ok and then uh, just for convenience we're gonna have uh, make this visible okay so what you can do uh, you can go to your plan view site plan or, or you can also do it in 3d view uh, so in this case i'm just switching to top view uh, right so if we go to architecture tab and then go to model lines and then we want to make sure we draw from the wall core to the wall core at the opposite end okay so that's just a simple uh revit model line okay upon which we're gonna uh, generate a uh, truss okay so we have drawn up a uh, model line at the corresponding level where we need to have it and then we go to a trusses tab and we can create section view for that model line okay you see how the roof is uh, has base offset 700 millimeters in this case so in between the space here we're going to generate our structural truss okay so select uh, that model line that you've just drawn up if we go to trusses tab <clears throat> and then go for the first option insert roof floor truss by selecting model lines if you click that one uh, you're gonna have your uh, the window will open up with a library of trusses so all those roof trusses uh come by default when you purchase uh truss plus okay so in this case among all those trusses we're going to go for a common attic uh truss okay Roof, like i said it's convenient to further sort of detail down your project okay right if we go back to our view here this is our truss that we have just generated and uh, we select that truss and go to um, trusses tab and go to modify truss uh, ends. Uh, so depending how much space you have left for your uh, ends uh, between the, uh, well, from bottom of the roof to the top of the wall, <coughs> if there's enough space, you can uh, select uh, different uh, kind of truss ends. So for example, uh, let's see if we can choose this. Uh, we can uh, determine our height. Uh, which is 500 uh, we can do 300 okay this view you can also see different types of trusses well actually it's only one different type so the one we just generated um, all other trusses are sort of same type um, okay so we have see we can see the different uh, truss end types right here that's the one we have just changed now. Okay. Right, so let's uh, move uh, on to the third of option for generating trusses. That is from model lines like we did just now. Only in this case, we're going to uh, draw a model line and use truss builder to sort of um, create our own truss. <clears throat> okay case uh why we're going to use truss plus well it's because uh, for more complex roof shapes um it's convenient to be able to sort of produce your own truss uh you can literally just draw up webs uh and sort of uh add that new truss to your library <clears throat> okay so exactly the same workflow we have our walls and our roof in place so we're going to do we're going to set we'll draw a model line almost anywhere uh, on our footprint of the roof um, so if we pick this spot and then <clears throat> draw a model line okay if we select that model line okay select the model line if you go to create a section view from the model line just like we did in the previous instance and then select the model line go to insert um, uh, trusses tab 
create roof truss from uh, model lines. And there you go. The truss builder is going to open up, is going to recognize uh, the roof shape that you are working with and at the top uh, of the walls. Okay, so in here you can start adding your webs. So let's just add a couple webs just to play with uh, truss type. Okay, and um, it, it, it sort of works um, with certain rules. So in terms of where you can insert your webs, you can sort of calculate, of course, where you want them. Uh, by default, sort of it gives you midpoints, uh, thirds of the length and so on. So we have just inserted those webs. Click OK. It's telling us to name uh, the new truss. So if you just name the truss according to <coughs> your standards, and it's gonna place that truss in the library, and it's also going to generate truss right in this uh, instance. More or less uh, complicated. It depends it depends on the roof type you're working with. Okay, we go back to this view. What we can do instantly, we can array those trusses along the roof uh, length of the roof. If we select that truss we just made, uh, and if we uh, copy or array, uh, we're gonna array a bunch of trusses to the left uh, of the existing truss at 600, and we can choose the amount we want, and we click OK. Uh, they all are exactly the same um, <clears throat> so with relatively little time you can uh, spread uh, uh, all those trusses up, uh, across your roof uh, which can be quite complex in the shape okay so let's see if uh, let's select one uh, truss and go to identity data uh, uh, section of the properties uh, of the trussings and generate assemblies from uh, truss we've just created. So we go to shop drawings tab, we can calculate truss volume. It's telling me that it's gonna calculate volume for just the truss uh, I've selected. So that one truss uh, now has all additional information under identity data. Okay, if we then go to shop drawings tab, we're gonna sort those trusses before we produce uh, assemblies so there's more information that has been uh, put in uh, mark values uh, sort mark values etc go back to shop drawings tab uh, and let's mark uh, let's sort all our structural framing for that truss okay so that is also done right so this truss here okay and if you go to shop drawings tab um, and then we go to create assembly from truss. Um, what it's going to do uh, is going to create assembly of an entire truss that we selected. It's also going to produce shop drawings. So this here is telling me that it has produced uh, an assembly with shop drawings, right? So if you look at your project browser on the right, under assemblies, you can see the SM2 truss, which is just uh, the one we've uh, created assembly for um, SM2 has sheet in place and that sheet contains uh, schedules uh, and that truss which we just generated okay uh, and all dimension is in place it's uh, put in automatically the views are named uh, schedules contain uh, precise information of that truss uh, and that truss which we just generated okay uh, and all dimension is in place it's uh, put in automatically the views are named uh, schedules contain uh, precise information of that truss a type of tag you use for your drawings um, or any other sort of features okay so if we go back to that truss um, so for example let's go to the section view uh, so what happens if a roof suddenly uh, changes its uh, profile, right? So let's try to do that. If you select Revit Roof, you can edit the profile. And let's uh, try to do something weird. Um, so the profile has changed. And how to update uh, your already generated trusses. Uh, so what we can do now is, uh, what we should do is to go to Shop Drawings. 
we're going to disassemble the assembly and we're going to go uh, select the truss uh, if you go to trusses tab and update roof floor truss so it's going to automatically update uh, that truss according to the changed shape shape of the roof you can multiple uh, you can select multiple trusses at one time and update all those trusses with just one click Okay, this has been updated. Uh, it doesn't mean that your webs are still relevant. You can change those as well if you like. Um, okay, so we're gonna repeat exactly the same uh, procedure. Shop drawings, I'm gonna create assembly from truss and have those drawings created, uh, which now match, uh, which now match our uh, change profile of the roof. Again, assemblies, SM2 truss. And there's our sheet with schedules and truss front elevation. And that's all customizable. You can choose what kind of uh, views you want to do. Right. Uh, so talking about C uh, CNC export is another uh, great thing about Trust Plus. Uh, the ability to export to various various CNC machines on multi-panel production lines. Um, so just note that uh, this is an optional feature. So if you actually are dealing with manufacturing uh, and have to export uh, data to CNC machines, it's, it's a great advantage. Uh, the workflow is simple. When you create, uh, when your trusses and drawings are ready, uh, you would export the model data to the file format that uh, can be read by the machine. And machine uh, Intel in turn will read the file and cut structural members accordingly. And we can tailor the data export requirements to suit the type of CNC machine that you're using. Uh, you can get in touch with us and uh, we'll make sure that the data uh, will get exported to the CNC readable format. Okay, with Trust Plus. Uh, as you see, the key benefit of Trust Plus is a high level of automation throughout the entire design process. Um, also, uh, as you probably well, well, parametric design tool uh, that works uh, in Revit platform. So therefore, a certain uh, degree of knowledge in Revit would be required. Um, I recommend downloading our free trial and testing software for yourself. Uh, to do that, if you go to aga-care.com, if you go to our main uh, page of our website, if you scroll down and look for free trials, click there, and you have all tools for BIM doc uh, sort of manual um, and ability to download it. So this is just explaining uh, how tools for BIM doc works, what does it contain, um, and then getting started information has instructions on how to use it. You have video material, and if you go to download section, you're able to download your uh, tools for BIMDoc for uh, different Revit versions. Okay, that is all we have prepared for you today. Let us know if you have any questions for us. I think Pavlos will answer those questions that he uh, was not able to answer during his presentation. I see, there are no more questions, so I would like to thank you for your attention for staying with us till the very end and we look forward to seeing you in our future webinars. AGA CAD, building BIM together.